critique the logical positivists move to moving to Karl Popper, who, who as you shall see, uh, was the chief critic of the logical positivists. Through scientific realism, which is the common person's view of what science um, is all about, and then some problems and alternatives with scientific realism. Then moving on to this idea that it's not the nature of the method, but rather the nature of what is done, what scientists do. And we'll see um, that there is a, 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 a claim that science is a particular approach to the world, a particular professional ethos, rather than any particular set of philosophical methods. Alternatives to scientific realism abound, and there have been some very interesting debates, uh, particularly in the 1990s, but also in the last decade, debates between scientific realists such as uh, such as my, my good friend Howard Sankey, who has the, happens to have the office next door to my office. He's a dyed-in-the-wool scientific realist, unshakable in, in, in his views on scientific realism. In my same department, I, another good friend, Helen Berrin, who is not a scientific realist. She, she is... Uh, uh, or she, uh, uh, she's very difficult to summarise, but um, she, she uh, takes a, a place somewhere there in the constructivists. Uh, she's a, a relativist, uh, I guess. Um, now, now th these debates, as you'll see, uh, are, are fascinating. Um, science as a certain skill set. We'll look at how scientists move their object of study, which is nature, the world, the universe, how they move that into the laboratory and what needs to be done to move the world into the laboratory in order to study it. And then to move the findings obtained in the laboratory back into the world. And, and again, not an easy process, quite a difficult process. Science and culture, science and governance, uh, important issues and we'll cover those. Uh, holding, uh, uh, handling scientific controversy. Uh, there are a number, number of controversies. You, you, um, uh, global warming you know, is, a, is a key controversy, for example. How do scientific realists approach this? How do social constructivists approach this? Uh, it's by addressing areas where science doesn't agree where science, you know, or, you know, we, uh, where there's a vigorous uh, debate, uh, we can see the differences most clearly, I think. And providing, providing that there's time, which uh, in, in the 12 week series, uh, I'll present a lecture too on how, on the relationship between morality and non-humans. Uh, and I'll be presenting an argument that suggests that morality extends beyond humans and non-humans, machines, technologies, can in and of themselves be held um, to moral account. I think you'll find it's a controversial argument that mixes science and technology. The professor will be discussing Eurocentrism. The approach that I'll be taking as a European is Eurocentric. Here you'll see an alternative. There's a whole world of science and a whole world of philosophy that is not Eurocentric. And we'll be addressing that. Uh, and a, a, a fascinating, I think, a fascinating way of illustrating the case um, is looking at the um, techno utopian movement uh, called transhumanism or uh, posthumanism. I see a smile on your face there. Uh, the, the techno, this techno-utopian movement and its relationship to um, Buddhism. Uh, there's also some interesting uh, papers being published on the relationship between uh, transhumanism and, and Christian thinking. So, so I'll be fascinated to hear about, about Buddhism. Okay, so that's an overview of what we'll be doing in the next 12 weeks. Let's make a start 
with, this, with a simple question, and, and the question is, um, what, what, what science? If we, if we say there's a thing called science, we're implying that there is a thing uh, that is not science. And if we claim that there's a scientific, that, that a, a particular knowledge claim is scientific, then one, by implication, there are other knowledge claims um, that are not scientific. So, how do we tell the two? How do we tell the difference between what is science and what is not science? Now, any school child will be able to tell you that science is physics and chemistry and biology and electronics and that not science is music and art and poetry and so on. And I don't disagree with that. That's, that's perfectly fine. But uh, when philosophers ask the question, uh, and when, too, when scientists ask that question too, that, that's not the sort of answer that they're looking for. They're, they're not looking for activities that are categorised as science. What they're looking for is the common features that makes something a science and is absent in whatever uh, is, is not science. Um, this is, notice, I don't know how proportionate these circles should be, but you'll see I've got the, the scientific, uh, as the scientific area of knowledge claims is much smaller than the total of knowledge claims. And, and, and I think that's true. When we move through daily life, we make knowledge claims all the time that would probably not be regarded as scientific by most scientists. Indeed, you, you might want to might want to just think about what you claim to know, and how much of what you know is scientific. This might be something we can discuss uh, in in the last half an hour <coughs> or, or so. Um, but I put it to you that most of what we know uh, is not scientific. Um, the I mentioned before, all of these, all of these um, different criteria are used uh, to make it to, to differentiate science from not science and to define what is scientific uh, from what is not scientific. Certain methods are claimed to be scientific. Uh, for example, uh, experimentation, empiricism and induction, uh, the use of double-blind trials. Uh, my colleagues in, in medicine regard a double-blind trial as being the gold standard for science. And that without a double-blind trial, that experimentation you know, of that kind a, a truly scientific claim uh, can't be made. But tell that to an astronomer, for example, or a geologist. And of course, astronomers, geologists, and medicos use quite different methods to approach their work. This makes it extraordinarily difficult to define a science and a scientific knowledge claim on the basis of the method by which the knowledge claim uh, was, uh, was supported uh, or on the basis of the method which is commonly deployed um, in, that, in that pursuit. Perhaps then we should abandon method and perhaps we should look to this idea of knowledge. Maybe it's true knowledge is what we're looking for here justifiable knowledge, knowledge justified in a certain way, maybe that's what um, science is. Um, then again, rather than focusing on a knowledge claim to truth, perhaps a knowledge claim to simply what works will suffice. So perhaps what science does is produce knowledge that works, produces uh, predictions that are validated by future events. 
produces computer code that doesn't fail.